Hi there, this is David Williams, and I want to talk to you today about JK flip-flops and T flip-flops. So these are new types of flip-flops, two new types of flip-flops, and they're similar to D flip-flops in that they only change, they're the output can only change at a certain point in time and that certain point of time is either the rising edge of the clock so when it's changing from a low to a high if it's a if it's a rising edge triggered flip-flop or on the falling edge if it's a falling edge triggered flip-flop that's when the clock signal goes from a high down to a low now we see a JK flip-flop here and we see a timing diagram for a JK flip-flop so there's my clock signal there's my J and my K values and here's my output and you can see that the output only is changing on the rising edge of the clock. It didn't change here because we were in a position, and we'll see what the rules are for JK flip-flops, we we're in a state here where we didn't need to change. But everywhere else, rising edge of the clock, something happens. So here's my picture of the JK flip-flop that I have taken from Wikipedia because I was too lazy to make my own image. And what we want to know right now are what are the rules for a JK flip-flop. Now we know that it only rises, only changes on the rising edge of the clock. And so here's my clock signal right there. This little triangle thing designates the clock for any of any flip-flop that you see. And we've got our two inputs, J and K, controlling, controlling the time when it changes is the clock, giving me my two outputs, Q and Q bar. Q and Q bar are going to be opposites of each other. And we have four different combinations that J and K can be. 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, and 1, 1. And we only care about those combinations in this particular case. This is the rising edge triggered clock. We only care about those values when the clock is going from a low to a high. And if anything else is happening, if it's a falling edge or if it's not changing, then we don't care what the J and K values are. We don't care what they are. Q is going to be, it's going to stay at its Q value, and Q bar will stay at its Q bar value. So let's look at these four combinations, four possible combinations, when the rising, when we have a rising edge of the clock. So the clock goes from a low to a high, and J and K are zero. Well, this is actually the latch state. Nothing's going to change. Q is going to be staying at Q. Q bar will stay at Q bar. What about zero, 01? If J is a 0 and K is a 1, and we have this rising edge of the clock, well, this is the reset. So Q is going to go to a 0, Q bar will go to a 1. Now, if J is a 1 and K is a 0, on the rising edge of the clock, this is the set. Q will go to a 1, Q bar will go to a 0. Now, here's the interesting one. This is the JK flip-flop uh, when J is 1 and K is 1, and we have a rising edge of the clock. And so what happens in this case is we have a toggle condition. So if Q is a 1, it will become a 0, and if Q is a 0, it will become a 1. And so Q, what essentially that means is that Q becomes Q bar, and Q bar becomes Q. This is the toggle. We have a toggle occurring there. If I was to label, I'll label all of these. Here's the latch, here's the reset, here's the set, and there's the toggle. So we can get this, this toggle occurring, which can have some, some useful applications. Now, the falling edge trigger, triggered JK flip-flop, we would have a bubble here at the input to say that it's a falling edge that's going to cause the things to change. And this truth table over here is going to be the same except that we're dealing with the falling edge of the clock for each one of these four cases. And if there's anything else, if we don't have a falling edge of the clock, then nothing's going to change. Q will stay at Q, Q bar will stay at Q bar. Now I want to show you another type of flip-flop here that can be created from the JK flip-flop. Now what if we just encapsulated this JK flip-flop inside a box here? And Q is just going to go out to the Q of this new flip-flop. Q bar is going to go out to Q bar of this new flip-flop. We've got the clock signal. It's just going to be directly for the clock signal. But instead of having two separate J and K signals, we're going to have a T signal. This toggle signal that's going to come in. And this toggle signal is going to come to J. And it's going to go to K. 
So now if this toggle signal is a 1, both J and K are a 1, and when J and K are both a 1, this causes the flip-flop to toggle. Now if this input signal is a 0, both J and K are a 0, so it will be in its latch state, it's not going to change. So we can create this new flip-flop, it's called the toggle flip-flop, that will toggle if the input's a 1, the control signal's a 1, and not toggle if that control signal, the T input, is a 0. Now let's look at a couple of examples of timing diagrams for these J, K, and, and T flip-flops. So here I've got my J signal and my K signal, and let's say it does something like this. And K does something like this. And then we've got our clock signal. And our clock signal looks like this. You see what I did there? I did I stopped the video while I drew out the clock signal. Pretty cool, eh? Okay, and my Q output, let's say Q starts at zero. And so what we're gonna have to do is every time we've got a rising edge of the clock, we'll look at the value of J and K and determine what happens to Q. So here's the first rising edge of the clock. J and K are both zero, so I'm gonna stay at zero. Another rising edge of the clock. So what's happening with J and K? Well, J is a one, K is a zero, so we're going to set. Next rising edge of the clock, J is a 0, K is a 1, so we're going to reset. Next rising edge of the clock, J is a 1, K is a 1, so we're going to toggle. Next rising edge of the clock, they're both 0, so we're going to latch. Next rising edge of the clock, J is a 1, K is a 0, so we're going to set. We're already at zero, already set, so we don't have to make any change. Next rising edge, they're both 0, so this is latch. Next rising edge, again, they're both zero, so this is latch, so we're not going to change. And then Q bar is going to be just the exact opposite of this. Now what if this was a falling edge triggered signal? Instead of the rising edge triggered signal, it was a falling edge triggered, so we're going to be looking solely at the falling edges of the clocks. So let's say Q again starts at zero. And here we have our first falling edge of the clock. So what's happening here? J is a 1, K is a 0, so we're going to have a set. Here's the next falling edge of a clock. J is a 0, K is a 1, so we're going to have a reset. Next falling edge, they're both 1s, so that's toggle. Next falling edge, they're both 0, so that's just the latch. Next falling edge, J is a 1, K is a 0. So we'll, we'll set. We're already at 1, so no change. Um, next falling edge, J is a 0, K is a 1, so we're going to reset. And final falling edge is, is they're both 0, so we're just going to latch. Now, what about an example for a T flip-flop? Well, T flip-flop has the T, the control signal, it's got a clock signal, and it's got the Q output. Now, let's see what happens. Let's draw in the clock here. Okay, so we've got a clock. And let's look at a T signal. So let's enable toggling for this period. Let's turn toggling off now. And then let's turn toggling back on for this period. Really simple for what happens with a T flip flop. And this is, let's say, this is a rising edge triggered. And let's say Q starts at zero. So rising edge, we look at the T value. If it's a one, we're going to toggle. And it's a one here, so we toggle. And it's one at this rising edge, so we toggle. And it's a zero, t is a zero at this rising edge, so we're going to stay at the same value. Stay at the same value there. Now here t is a one, so we'll toggle. T is a one, so we'll toggle. And then we're just going to stay high. Now in Quartus, if you get a JK flip-flop, this is the symbol that you're going to get. And this is, the, this, is the, this is the logic element that you're going to get. You've got your J input, your K input, you've got your clock, you got your Q output, you could create Q bar by putting an inverter on it. But there's also these two signals, this PRN and this CLR, CLRN. And these are what are called asynchronous signals. And they differ from J and K, which are synchronous signals, and Q, which is a synchronous signal. I guess Q is the synchronous signal, because it the value of Q only changes when the, we have the rising edge of a clock. J and K can be considered synchronous, synchronous 
as inputs because their value only matters at the rising edge of this clock. This PRN, which is a preset, uh, invert preset, and the clear CLRN, which is the inverted clear, are asynchronous. The PRN will clear Q whenever it goes low. And CLRN, I, I sorry, PRN will set Q whenever it goes low, and CLRN will clear 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 Q whenever it goes low. It doesn't matter what hap what's happening with the clock. As soon as this goes low, Q will go high, or as soon as this goes low, Q will go low. So now I've got the timing diagram, a, a timing diagram drawn out for this, the the input signals to this JK flip flop, and we're going to look at C, look and see what happens to the Q signal. So Q. Well, clock, let's see, clock, first rising edge of clock is there, so we're going to look at the value of J and K at that particular point. Let's say Q started low. The rising edge of the clock, J is low, K is high, so we're going to reset, and that's what we're doing. Although we're already at zero. Next rising edge of the clock, J is high, K is low, so we're going to set. Now here at this instant, that's when PRN goes low, so we're actually going to set there. Doesn't matter what's happening with with the clock, we're just going to stay in the set. And then at this point here doesn't so the rising edge of the clock doesn't matter. We're just going to stay with the one. Now here we've got the preset has gone high. Now the clear has gone gone low, so we're going to clear here. And it doesn't matter what's happening with the clock, we're just going to asynchronously clear Q back to zero. The next rising edge of the clock, this is a little bit tricky to see, I guess. We've got K is at about zero, a 1, and J is at a 1, so we're going to toggle at this point. So we toggle back to it, because clear is, has gone back to a 0, so we can do the, the, we can look at the values for J and K on the rising edge of the clock here. And we'll see, we'll stay high. Next rising edge of the clock, well, we're in toggle, or we're in latch, so we're not going to change. And then clear goes low again right there, so we're going to immediately clear Q back to zero. And then we're going to stay low uh, for the rest of the rest of the time that we can see there. So we've uh, I've introduced here these concepts of the asynchronous clear and the asynchronous set. And th these these two particular signals can be seen they could be on any any flip flop. They don't have to just be on JK flip flops. They can be on D flip flops and T flip flops as well. And and they're asynchronous, so they don't need the rising edge of the clock to change. And they're often used at the beginning of a of a, of the of an application in order to put the all the flip flops into a particular state before, say, the clock is stable or before the clock is started up. Uh, so I hope you've learned a little bit about some new types of flip flops and some new types of signals that we can have to flip flops. And we'll see you in the next video.